Greetings, folks. I'm an American who has lived in Germany since 2001, but you can call me Armstrong. And today, I want to talk about five awkward encounters that I encountered as an American here in Germany. Let's get into it, shall we? Number one, square dancing? Not once, but twice in my time here in Germany have I had the sentence said to me, Oh, you're American? I do square dancing. In the first situation where this occurred, the woman then proceeded to show me pictures and awards she had from the competition she participated in here in Germany doing square dancing. And the second time, which is actually a few years later and completely unrelated, I happened to be at one of these German fests. When an older couple revealed to me, Oh, you are American? We are in a dancing club where we do square dancing. Now let me tell you something about why this is awkward to me. Why it's weird to me. I am originally from the northeast part of America, Pennsylvania, not far from Philadelphia. And I know nothing about square dancing. I'm saying both times when this was brought up to me here in Germany, it was awkward. Like, I didn't know how to respond. I could sense that they were excited about this moment. I found it really awkward. Like, honestly, all I knew coming from where I come from about square dancing was it was something I had seen on TV and generally seemed like hillbillies did it. Since most of my viewers at this point are German, I think it's only fair to clarify. Imagine if you're a German from, let's say, Hamburg, somewhere in North Germany. And let's say you find yourself in New York City. And at some point, an American comes up to you and says, Oh, you're German? And they follow that with, well, I'm a member of a dancing club where we do traditional German dances and we put on our later hose and then we slap our ankles and our knees. Yee that would be awkward, right? So you see where I'm coming from? Awkward. And random. And strange that it happened twice. Who knew square dancing was so popular in Germany? Not me. Number two. I just wanted to work in Holland. After my great escape from the south of Germany, I landed in the northwestern part of Germany. Due to working in international sales for years, I had sold many times in Holland, and for the most part, most times, enjoyed it. And so when I got word that in one of the employment centers here, in a border town, right on the border to Holland, that they once a month got a visit from a recruiter that came over from the Netherlands to recruit people in Germany to work there. And I guess to just generally talk about jobs available where for whatever reason they were seeking Germans. Boy, oh boy, was I excited. Like, I was really excited. I thought, this is my chance. I can find a job working in Holland maybe move there. I got all dressed up in a business suit, did my hair, did my makeup, got together all of my paperwork, my circus act of a resume, all of my references, and I headed down to this Dutch recruitment day. Excited! Typical me showed up way too early. I just confirmed that this was in fact happening today with the secretary at the front desk. And then I took a seat in front of the room. Eventually, a very busy looking man came in, not even seeing me sitting there, walked in, began setting up that room for, I guess, his presentation. He was just ever so busy, papers here, papers there, organize this. And I just ever so passively, tap, 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 excuse me. Don't mean to disturb, I said. Just want to clarify that I'm in the right location for the recruitment day for jobs in Holland. And to this, he responded with British. No full sentence was formed. To which I responded, what, me? No, I'm, I'm not 
British. I'm American. But that was where I wanted to clarify legal to work here, how long I've worked and lived here. But I couldn't get those words out because shit got awkward. And that guy from the moment he appeared just seemed generally miserable. So yeah, long story short, his awkward response to me telling him, no, I'm not British, I'm American. His response was, forget it. You can forget it. You're like an African. Forget it. Did he just say, like an African? What the, does that even mean? Was that racist against me? Was that racist against African friends that I have and cherish? What the hell kind of response was that? And how many times in Europe do I have to explain to people that tone and body language play a role to people that work in job positions where they should already know that tone and body language play a role in the situation? I'll tell you how many times. A lot. I found out about a year later when I actually went to a Dutch immigration office to get all of my questions answered. And she clarified, Africans and Americans are not EU citizens. So in that way, we would be the same when it comes to searching for a job. Why the guy picked Africans as opposed to Chinese, Brazilian, Russian? I don't know. Why he said it and spoke to me the way he did? I don't know. But what I do know, my heart was a little broken that day. I was really excited when I went there. But also, that was just really awkward. I went for the recruitment day, and it was over before it even began. And the way this so-called professional handled it, quite awkward. Number three. I didn't choose to be born in the land that I was born in, and I certainly don't have much control over what the politicians there do and have done. So one day, I'm at the supermarket, standing in the checkout line. When I hear from behind me, some young man spouting off. Now I'm deaf in one ear, so that person has to be really loud, or I have to really focus in to really understand what's going on. But what I started to understand out of this ranting that was going on behind me was some stuff that a lot of people would label like conspiracy stuff. I think some people might go, fair enough. What I mean by that was, I heard him say things like, the NSA, the FBI, the CIA, and you kind of go into like a little tangent about, you know, things they have done all over the world. Let's say damage that they've caused in other countries. You might have even called them criminal organizations. And in the beginning, once I'm listening and I'm figuring out what this guy is saying, gonna lie for the first couple things part of me was going preach brother but it got real bad real quick I'm saying it got awkward I looked behind me just to get a peek at the guy I confirmed it was as I thought the guy was just spouting off he was not in conversation with anybody in fact everybody around him and me were doing their best to pretend this wasn't happening not me nope you see, I'm American. This guy is spouting off specifically about Americans and how the American government is really, really evil. And while I maybe agreed with some points he was spouting off when I first started really listening, I got more and more nervous the longer I stood there. And when this clearly slightly disturbed person started proclaiming out loud just what he would do if he ever had the chance to come face to face with an American. He wasn't talking about hugs. He was spouting off pretty loud and pretty graphically some pretty horrible things to the point that it made me wonder, did he know? Did he know that I'm an American? Literally like just a few people and front of him. Oh, this is awkward in the worst of ways is all I could think. By the time I got up to the checkout line, my hand was shaking ever so slightly. 
but totally out of an involuntary fear, anxiety, whatever you want to call it. But my hand was shaking as I went to put it in the machine and pay. Finally, I'm up to pay, and I'm almost in the clear. I'm almost out of here, right? Side note, the lady that was working the checkout that day is a lady I adore. She's an older lady, and even though she doesn't seem to have the best job in the best location, she's always got a smile and is always friendly. And I really appreciate her and try to give her that same energy. But she looked at me slightly confused when she saw my hand shaking. And I felt I needed to give some sort of explanation. But I was kind of frozen. And I didn't want to open my mouth with my thick accent and all. So I just kind of really quietly, in my best flat German accent, I said to her, Ich bin Amerikanerin. And it must have made some sort of click in her head. Because she then declared very loudly in that guy's direction that he needs to knock it off. And I felt it then got more awkward as I'm the one standing there. I'm the one paying right now when she finally opens her mouth about this. And she says directly to him, if you're going to continue to insult our customers, you're going to have to leave. I felt like she just pretty much like stood up, pointed at me and was like, She's American. Freaking awkward. Oh, I stumbled home real fast that day. That was awkward. Number four. Telling some intelligent, well-educated Germans about a Thanksgiving story from elementary school. This story takes place inside of a games workshop. They're called Warhammer shops these days. In my time managing one of those shops, I met some of what I can only describe as the most intelligent and interesting people ever. I had a lot of customers that were doing really well in school or had really decent jobs. Well-educated folks, aware of things like history and propaganda. And I can't remember exactly how this conversation began. I got a feeling it was probably like around Thanksgiving time, end of November. And so I started telling them the story of when I was in, it was either first or second grade, and the teachers separated our class 50-50. Half of us took our little scissors and paper, and we made ourselves little headbands with fake feathers on them. And the other half of the class made like, I think it was little pilgrim bonnets. And the teachers informed us that later we would have a feast in the hallway. You know, because this is what Thanksgiving is about. The pilgrims came here searching to practice freedom of their religion. And the Indians helped them to farm the land and they enjoyed the harvest peacefully together. And yeah, so all of these little kids, at the instruction of their teachers, dressed up like pilgrims and Indians, and we had a little candy feast in the hallway in front of all the classrooms, split up, wearing our slightly racist costumes, well, that's where the awkward looks began. There were looks of like, really? There were giggles. There were looks of just shock, disbelief. And one of these little smarty pants piped up and said something like, are you for real? What, no mention of smallpox, genocide? Kind of awkward, America. I feel like this was the day that I had Germans before me that understood what I mean when I say the propaganda is strong in that land. Like it literally starts in elementary school. Awkward, but I, I felt like these Germans got it. I wish more Americans did. I look back at that memory now and I just get angry. Because in my humble opinion, that was clearly history being whitewashed by what I can only call a white supremacist narrative being used to brainwash children to guide them into being 
blindly nationalistic, and to not question this corrupt authority with a dirty history. Just saying. Awkward. Number five. The time this American met actual victims of American military action abroad. On this particular occasion, I was working in an international airport, and when I needed to restock items that I had sold from my shop, I had to take my little trolley and go down to our storage room, which is in the parking garage area of this international airport. And so one day as I'm doing this, as I come through the door and enter the level of the garage I need to be in to go to my storage room, I see in front of me a man and a woman, a few other people at their side, and the man is standing there holding the ticket. And he's just like got this look of fear on his face. And his wife too. Oh snap, I bet I know what's going on. I know that look. I've had this fear. I bet they can't find their car. I can't tell you how many times in my life that I would drive my car into some massive parking garage and as I'm parking it, I'm really scared. I'm not gonna be able to find my car when I come back. I've had this fear, it's real. And so when I approached them and asked if everything was okay, he quickly confirmed what I thought by saying, I can't find my car. I said, well, let me look at your ticket. I'll see if I can help you figure this out. And of course, that ticket did not really give like clear information. There was stuff printed on it. There were numbers printed on it. But we weren't sure if these numbers were for like sections or levels. We were, we were both a little confused. We walked around for a little bit and it was becoming quickly very clear to me that I didn't know where this guy's car was either. I thought it was time to get him some professional help, like somebody that knows how this garage works. And I think he told me he didn't speak German. So I went to the help speaker box thing in the parking garage. I explained the situation. I read some data off of this little ticket the guy had. We were informed we were on the wrong floor. His car was at a different level. That's all. So as him and I proceeded to walk back to where his wife was and their friends. We reached his friends and family and they assured me that they could probably find it by now and they thanked me for my help. And I was like, you don't need to thank me. I sympathize with this. I have seriously had anxiety, fear that exactly this would happen to me. And I would hope that someone would help me if I was in the same situation you all were in right now. Glad I could help. Oh, but before I could leave, then came the question. You speak such good English. Are you British? That again? And I replied, as I often do, no, I'm American. I've lived here since 2001. I don't ever plan on going back. But then all I felt were eyeballs on me. Serious eyeballs. It felt awkward before any words came out. They said to me, we are Iraqi and we are here today at the airport to pick up our family. They just got here from Iraq. And while their friends standing right behind them did give me like a smile and a wave and a nod, it felt awkward, the eyes on me. Could have been my own self-conscious because Definitely in moments like that, I am well aware of what America has done, especially in the Middle East. I felt awkward and it made me nervous. Not like I was scared. They were the nicest people ever. That made me feel even worse. Like I had guilt feelings. I just felt bad. So I had to say something and I said, if I may, I'm sorry for what my country did to your country. And this sweet man and his sweet wife looked at me and they said something like, oh no, we, we, we know, no, no, we know it is not you. And I think the wife like translates to the people behind her, 
And again, while everybody's being friendly to me, the look in their eyes. It all felt terribly awkward. And the wife went on to tell me these things are very, very bad where they are from. And they have lost many people. The aunt here, who they had just picked up, well, she witnessed some really bad things involving children in the family. And I remember, I remember the lady looking at me, looking at me in my eyes and actually asking me, why? Why do they do this? Why does America do this? People die. We watched family die. I looked at her and I said, I want you to know, number one, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry that happened to you. I'm really sorry that happened to your family. I'm really sorry that happened with children. I'm really sorry. I want you also to know that not all Americans supported that happening. I want you to know that a lot of Americans feel like they were lied about this. And I'm sure I said a couple awkward things because Quite honestly, at that moment, all I remember is feeling the pain in not just her eyes, but the people they picked up, they, re they just picked up from the airport that day. Children. So yeah, I made a public apology on behalf of uh, Americans. I felt like it was the right thing to do in that awkward situation. And to this day, I am the opinion that that, exactly that, should happen to every single American. Every single American that believes they are part of a democracy, where they have a say in a vote in the decisions made by their government, if you're ever going to consider dropping bombs on nations and allowing innocent people to die, I think you personally should face a mother who has lost a child to that and then go vote and make your decision. Three times I tried to tell that story, three times I tried to not cry. Well now, this is awkward. Yeah, so those were five awkward encounters that I had as an American living here in Germany. If you liked it, don't forget to click like. If you want to see more, then subscribe and click the bell. And as usual, you know I've got to say, until we meet again, take care of yourself.